Thank you for existing. I brought Flapjack. You can't see, but he's over there.
parkour.
I think Pittsburgh likes hardcore. I don't know about you, but like there's like, there's people here. Some people like hardcore, okay? Point proven. I did this, oh my God.
party. Did you? Are you no, recording? Divine time. In my asshole. The after party is in my asshole. Fries and coleslaw. I haven't. Someone told me to do that. Eating chicken wings I mean, with flapjack. These one. We can go to the original one. It happened. It's, it's real. If you made it this far, that means that you're here for the story time. I had a couple people come up to me this past weekend at the event and tell me, oh my god, you're you're gonna blow up on YouTube and that's really not gonna happen if we don't get these numbers to change a little bit, honey. Hey. Please, if you could just like, comment, subscribe on my channel. It helps a lot more than you would know. Let's get into this story time. Booking Flapjack has been a goal of mine since I, like 2018 whenever I started throwing parties and knowing that whenever he showed up an hour and a half before the show even started i was very shocked i was not ready for this i was loading in boxes and i turn around and he's there and i start to freak out i hug him he probably thought that i wasn't even the party promoter with the way i was acting he probably thought that i was just some random raver i mean i was throwing this party with my friends too like it was me and steel city ravers so he probably didn't realize that I was even involved with how I was fanning over him and everything. It was freaking crazy. I had a chance to vlog some clips real quick. I turn around and get back from that not even 10 minutes later, Flapjack's sitting in the candy corner. He's sitting in the candy corner and I'm like, oh my God, I have this troll doll necklace that I made him and I was so excited to give it to him. And I'm like, this is literally my moment. This is my time. He's sitting, I can be sitting. So I go over there and as I'm walking over there, he's literally pouring out this massive plastic bag of just bracelets, candy singles and everything. So I sit like right next to it and I felt kind of bad because I felt like I was interrupting something he was trying to do. But he was like, oh, do you want one? Do you want one? And I was like, yes, actually I was trying to give you this troll doll necklace that I have and I was like wearing it and stuff I'm like this one right here and I'm showing him and he was just like oh, oh and he didn't look like as stoked as I thought he was gonna be for it and I here's why he likes shorter necklaces necklace was literally down here I'll try to put the picture but he literally tied it up like this my friend Evan my photographer friend he's also a DJ he was sitting across from us and he got a chance to take like tons of photos of us talking yeah he was wearing it momentarily but he ended up having to take it off because it was too long and as I'm giving it to him I'm just like are you afraid of troll dolls and he's like what no He's probably like, why are you asking me this? And I was like, oh, because I was like worried because when I was a kid, I just start ranting to him. Just absolute word vomit. When I was a kid, my mom had these troll dolls that were supposed to be gifted, like super scary, and grandma gave them to her, and I remember all these scared of it. And I was like, oh, this candy, I totally thought, oh my god, these great troll dolls. He's like, what the fuck is this? But anyway, I give him the necklace, we do the little, you know, peace, love, unity, respect, and we bop heads he laughs about that too because i like went in to like bop ahead with him i'm like bitch we gotta do this the real way like he played you know the little bracelet that we got and everything and it was cute we got to trade he started telling me like the craziest story i have ever heard he made it seem like it was super normal over there so he's from la i'm from the east coast and i I'm in Pittsburgh area where I throw parties at. So we're in Pittsburgh, a Pittsburgh venue at this moment, talking about this warehouse party that happened underground in a tunnel. He paid homeless people that were at the opposite end of the tunnel to pay like, to like play in this tunnel. Doing this giant 800 person rave in this tunnel underground there's dust and must and mold and probably rat shit everywhere and these ravers are just like mm, 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 mm. there and then they start lighting fires it turns into like woodstock 99 like for real it was like fat boy slim up in there there's fires in the middle of the tunnel there's 800 ravers just stomp 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 stomping to happy hardcore and gabber and it's just all good all the time Night goes on and all of a sudden, SWAT team shows up. There's two helicopters hanging above. 
be try flying in the air. Two helicopters are just up there. What the hell are you doing in this tunnel? You know what I mean? They're in the middle of like LA. It's like, dude, cops or the SWAT team actually tried to break in like into like one part of the tunnel or something like a door from the, like a side access point they realized how many people were in there and all the ravers were like fuck you fuck you ended up like scaring away the SWAT team and they ended up realizing that it was more than just a couple hundred people it was almost a thousand people you know what I'm saying so they needed more reinforcements than the SWAT team and the two the two helicopters so they called in like more SWAT team and more like I guess police officers and stuff like that and then they shut down the party again with tear gas rubber bullets flying everywhere in different directions and all this stuff and he's talking about it like it's a normal thing like this happens every weekend like, yeah, we just get tear gas and rubber bullets. And he was like, yeah, well, there's a lot of punks in our scene. And like, there's a lot of people who are just used to going to protests and getting like tear gas and rubber bullets all the time. I'm like, bitch, I don't even know. Like, I was trying to get some pointers on how I could throw a renegade myself in my own area. And I'm just like, yeah, this sounds a little stressful. This sounds a little, a little too dangerous for me. Like after the whole entire brave got busted and evacuated which took a long time because there's rubber bullets and tear gas and people can't see and it's dusty as fuck and there's tons of cops they ended up moving the party half the party at least 400 people they it, he said give or take showed up to this separate location what i gathered from all of this is the way you throw a renegade is find two places that you can throw the party at so that you have a backup and be ready to get shot with rubber bullets and maced with tear gas possible helicopters definite cops you know if you can handle that but i know that they they've happened in my city before and like cops have just not cared so obviously that's like the worst of the worst that could happen and i guess bitch i don't know i've never thrown like a real renegade before i threw if you want the redneck meets raver meets Link and Log rave story time where I actually broke my back almost. Calm a blow, cause for real. So anyway, what else did he tell me? Oh yeah, he was explaining to me that dubstep basically is not popular over on the West Coast and that's crazy to me because over here it is like the only thing people want. Like there's even hardcore dominant promoters over here that will have, you know, dubstep takeover nights and stuff I know what's up in the east coast because i only raved in the east coast but i just know that like over here our hardcore scene is just not not it but if you saw it just needs more representation i don't really think there's that many promoters out here who are dedicated to the underground hardcore sound and all that stuff they're just not here to keep that kind of stuff alive with you know trying to do whatever brings in ticket sales and i think that if you throw like a smaller amount of events and you just stop worrying so much about making money off of artists when you could be just like throwing parties that you actually enjoy you would probably be able to bring in a lot more hardcore people i promise like <clears throat> it's just crazy to me to know that even though flapjack is a super talented person and like he's basically an idol to me and meeting him was like a really 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 big deal in my life he's just a regular person and like he would just after we got done talking he literally just walked around the entire venue and gave all these ravers candy people who were so excited just as excited to meet him if not more than me there's some people in that crowd who came from la just to see him play literally flew from the other side of the country to my party to see him play and i think that's awesome like these people are so sweet and the things that people do for hardcore is just if you saw it like these people are so sweet well yeah there's a ton of reasons why i love the music and why i love candy but you saw how that candy corner brings people together and like flapjack was straight up there just making candy with people you know his fans like people who aren't used to seeing him every weekend in a different warehouse location club whatever they're not used to that people who haven't seen he hasn't been to my city in seven years so bringing him here was really important to me it's such a big goal it's just so cool that knowing that even though he's an idol he's just a normal person like he literally just even though he's so creative and so talented that's what i figure out every time that like i actually pick the brains and the djs and producers that i book and that i see and all this stuff i just like 
start to realize that they're normal people just like you and me and that like they're regular humans because we start to like dehumanize them or like think they're, they're like these not gods but you know what I mean like you just start fanning over them and you start acting like they're a different they're not human almost you know I don't know you act like they're like a big celebrity and they are but like you can treat a celebrity like a normal human and think is what I'm trying to say and the celebrities are normal humans and celebrities do normal human things and can be really sweet kind-hearted people so yeah that's what I'm trying to say I still didn't find my freaking plur fortune walk that somebody stole I'm gonna assume in my brain who it was and all my friends who I told at the party too they they know who my assumption is. I'm just saying if you actually wanted to steal something from me, you would have stole something else that I had and not a rock. So I totally think whoever stole it from me, which I have my own assumptions, is a person who's just trying to fuck with me. So I just thought it was funny because it only clarified everything going on in my brain but anyway i love you guys thank you so much for watching thank you for existing anybody can be amazing if they just be themselves remember that everybody is important in the story and if you delete a character from the story the story just doesn't make any sense anymore so thank you for being alive thank you for being here don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below if you want to hear the crazy hick cabin me almost breaking my back story time Okay, thank you. Bye.